Okay, it's it's four o'clock, and I want to welcome everyone to the meeting. And uh, really, I miss uh, miss talking to all of you. Our last meeting was um, two weeks ago, and normally I'm used to having these meetings every other every other week. So I've been really looking forward to uh, talking to all of you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a a share screen here. Um, one minute. Okay, share screen. Oh, let's see, here we go. Okay, I hope everybody can see the screen. And I don't know if Rick um, Palestino is uh, online, but uh, Rick, I want to thank you so much for sending me uh, this YouTube link uh, and asking me if I agree with uh, the viewpoint. And you asked me if I would comment on this at the next Zoom meeting. So I want to thank you very, very much. Uh, but I did watch the YouTube meeting, and actually it was very uh, inspiring for me, and it, it kind of really changed my perspective a little bit about the importance of nutrition. I mean, many of you know how I harp about the importance of our diet, you know, food is the best medicine. Um, but there's an ophthalmologist, uh, Dr. Chris Kenobi, and I... Uh, uh, I am uh, trying to contact him. I would like to do a podcast uh, uh, webinar with him to talk about his uh, uh, philosophy and strategy for preventing and treating uh, macular degeneration. Uh, he did write a book on the ancestral diet strategy. He has a, um, a nice uh, website uh, on curing uh, AMD. So he's a very passionate individual and an ophthalmologist and an associate clinical professor. And he did uh, write uh, um, and publish an article on the displacing foods of modern commerce are the primary and proximate cause of age-related macular degeneration. And, you know, I kind of became interested in this myself because when I was writing my book, um, Homeopathic Ophthalmology, I was reviewing um, uh, the ophthalmic literature uh, during the early time of the homeopathic ophthalmologist from 1850 to 1910. And I was kind of surprised, actually, that there were no recorded cases of uh, macular degeneration at that time. And I did have the opportunity to review many atlases of uh, retinal diseases. And they did describe, you know, other common retinal disorders, you know, retinitis pigmentosa, vein occlusion, diabetic retinopathy, et cetera. But macular degeneration was not mentioned. And it's not because of those ophthalmologists, you know, ignored it or they just didn't see it. And so uh, Dr. Kenobi feels that the real cause of macular degeneration is changes in our diet. And in particular, so I want to go over this information, which I think is really important. Um, so macular degeneration was extremely rare in the 1900s. And now 20,000 people are diagnosed every day, 20,000. One in three over the age of 75, one in 11 over 50. And um, he feels that it is related to polyunsaturated uh, fats and uh, the oil average consumption. And you can see as the oil consumption increases, the incidence of macular degeneration increases. So here's the total vegetable oil consumption in the US. Um, so, in the 1800s, uh, all of our oil was from animal fat. 
and you can see there's a flat line um, up to about 1910. Then it began to change. We began to add um, fats from vegetable oils. And not only is there an increase in macular degeneration, but also an increase in uh, cardiovascular disease, heart disease. You can see as the increase, here's the increase of vegetable oils right here, heart degrees, heart disease uh, corresponded almost one-to-one -one with the increase of vegetable oils. There was also an interesting fact that when margarine was introduced, that Procter & Gamble began donating a lot of money to the American Heart Association. So they became bad partners. And I can remember, I, I know that a lot of you have heard the margarine commercials. Margarine is much better than butter, but that is very false. So uh, global food trends, as the edible oils increase, so does global obesity and chronic disease. So seed oils are definitely poison to our bodies and the majority uh, we should blame for inducing macular degeneration, obesity, and virtually every other chronic disease. This is kind of shocking. Um, these toxic oils have a half-life of over 680 days. My God, so it takes six to eight years for these poisonous oils to completely exit your body even if you would eliminate them completely today. And also they tend to accumulate. So, you know, we've been consuming these toxic oils over many, many years and they're accumulating in our body. And that's one of the causes of, of the macular degeneration. And uh, this is something shocking here that acrylin, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, ingredients of some of these oils is equivalent to smoking up to 97 <laughs> cigarettes. Isn't that shocking? So you should avoid seed oils like the plague. Uh, and a lot of people say I'm safe because I wouldn't buy or cook with that stuff, but it doesn't matter if you cook with it, it's, it's toxic to your body. Um, so what Dr. Kenobi uh, recommends that those of you that eat out at restaurants, you should have a card, an allergy warning card to the chef, cook, or staff. I cannot have any oils touching my food. Uh, Dr. Kenobi feels that pure butter and bacon lard are, are fine. And uh, my wife and I do a lot of uh, traveling and, uh, you know, we go to the breakfast and we think that the eggs are a safe uh, source of food for our diet. But a lot of these eggs uh, have soybean oil and a lot of um, uh, other uh, toxic ingredients. So it's not really good, healthy eggs. Uh, also, mayonnaise, canola oil seed oils. Uh, Chick-fil-A uses peanut oil, soybean oil, which is a no-no. Uh, chipotle, um, rice bran oil, sunfly oil. So you really got to be vigilant with these oils. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings, they're one of the few fast food restaurants that's cooked in beef tallow. And even the McDonald's, their burgers are not grilled with any oil. So the McDonald's burgers are safe, but you have to avoid everything else. So here's a list of um, the harmful oils, safflower, grapeseed, sunflower, coin, carton seed, soybean, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the safe oils are beef tallow, butter, palm kernel oil, and coconut oil and lard which is kind of shocking to me because a lot of us have grown up and we were told to avoid butter and avoid lard, right? <laughs> what about uh, olive oil, coconut oil, and avocado oils? Unfortunately, these are usually not pure oils. They're contaminated or mixed with a lot of seed oils. So they should also be avoided unless you get a pure 
source of coconut oil. Uh, even extra virgin oil, olive oil, you'll have to be careful. Most of it is uh, uh, mixed with a lot of other oils. Nuts and seeds, the same way. A lot of these seeds have a high percentage of linoleic acid, which you shouldn't avoid. And uh, let me see here. All right, I'm going to stop right there. And Rick, I want to thank you. And uh, what I can do now is open things up for questions. So the way we can talk to each other, uh, raise your hand and I'll put you on um, speakerphone. Or if you do have a question, let me see here. I think you can go to... Um, of looking here. Oh, question and answers. You can fire me a question and answer. Okay, let's see here. Anthony? Well, How you are you, doctor? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I just wanted to follow up on a couple issues with you. Um, Belladonna LM1, I've been on it for approximately two months. Haven't really noticed any change in the, in the vision in the left eye. Um, so, and I don't see Dr. Martinelli until the 29th to get you more information on that. Is he on the same page with you? In uh, terms what, do you of what do you mean? Is he on the same page? Well, does, is, is he, um, does he deal in homeopathy or does he, or is no, he just no, traditional he, he does not deal uh, with uh, in homeopathy at all. Okay. Uh, but he is open to alternative treatments. He's a good friend of mine. In fact, I okay. used to work in his office. Oh, okay. So we can okay. correspond, and I know he'll he'll do a good eye exam. And you know, he's not going to criticize you for using the alternative treatments. But I would not want to change your remedy. Here's the other thing. Now, the homeopathic remedy may not cause a major change in your vision. Usually when you use homeopathic remedy, we first want to see a change in your mental emotional state, maybe more energy, calmness. Remember, we want to see a shift in the mental emotional before the physical. So it's been two months. Should I give it maybe another month to see where it's going or? No, I think it. if you really haven't had a mental emotional shift or anything positive, then it's time to change the remedy. But I would like to wait Till we get the eye exam first uh, th th that's that's fine that's fine no issues uh the next next issue tied into that is i've been with, really without an ophthalmologist for uh, probably about a month and a half and i've just been taking my meds i had to finally stop taking azetazolamide because i found out that that was the cause of the ting tingling in the hands the pain in the foot and all kind of other issues i was having the increased coughing once I got off azetazolamide, because I talked to the pharmacist and she said, that's that's a flag for you because you have a sulfur allergy. You shouldn't be on it. And she said that the uh, uh, Simbrinza, it, since it's topical, it shouldn't bother you at all. But it's the azetazolamide that's causing your problems, she thought. So I got off yeah, it. But you have to really make sure because the acetazolamide orally may be what's necessary to keep your pressure under control. Well, see, that's the conundrum I'm in. Uh, it's it's necessary to keep it under control, but all I want to when I'm on it, all I want to do is sleep. Yeah, and well, I, let's have let's have Doctor Martinelli check your uh, okay your pressure, and uh, he may feel that you don't need the acetazolamide, or he may have a different recommendation. Uh, that'd be good. The the last question I have is on uh, Ocum Ocumed. Um, I've been taking, I'm on my second bottle. I've been taking it three times a day, like it says, but I noticed on the bottle, it says cut back to one, one time a day uh, after, uh, after you're done with, a, f after you finish a bottle. 
And so I was just wondering what your thoughts were on that, or if I'm okay just still taking it. No, no, I think you're okay using it twice a day unless you develop, you know, a reaction or irritation. I okay, I was taking it wrong. three times a day. So cut it back to two times a day? I would say two times a day. Okay. Is the That's best all. way. Thank you so much. Yeah, we have a question here uh, from Bruce. What's the best way to detox these oils? Well, the best way is to avoid them. They have to clear your body. And I also, I think, um, infrared sauna, you know, drinking plenty of water, uh, eating, uh, you know, I think the infrared sauna, I, I don't think chelation is not going to help detoxify these oils. But the best way to detoxify them is to uh, eliminate them from your diet. Uh, Mary. I found organic grass-fed butter, but one had natural flavors added. Well, you want to avoid that like the plague. Those natural flavors are the toxic stuff. All right, uh, Mirjana, let's see your hands up. You can unmute yourself. How are you? How are you doing, Dr. Condrat? Uh, uh, fine. Thank you for joining us. Yes, I have a, a few questions. I started your program uh, two weeks ago when I received the machine and I have some hiccups and I just want your uh, um, opinion. Should I tough it out or change something? So I started the machine first uh, because that's the only thing I had. And uh, I use uh, I start using Oclomed from June uh, 8. So in a few days, it will be two months. You told me from three times a day to reduce to one, uh, two, uh, two times a day, two drops with the machine. That's what I'm doing. What do I do past two months of usage? Uh, well, you continue. You continue the treatment. We want to, well, first of all, we have to know, are you having any positive effect? You know, slow and steady wins the race. Yes, with Oclomed, after starting using Oclomed without machine, after maybe three weeks, I had, a, uh, because my le left eye has a film, that film, uh, I noticed it's thinner. It's like a dusty glasses versus like a very, like oily, like with your sunscreen touched glasses. Right, so well, that's, that's, a, that's a good sign. Yes, and that is basically the only improvement I had. So that's, uh, uh, so I continued two times a day. Continue two times a day, and uh, it may be, you know, sometimes initially when you start a treatment, uh, you will get a, a quick initial initial change, but the rest of the changes takes longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if that makes any I... sense, but at least we know that you have a positive effect. So uh, just with Oculmed, uh, and uh, since I start using machine, I don't notice any difference, unfortunately. And uh, uh, what I was doing before, I, I mentioned that to you, uh, I uh, am inhaling uh, uh, molecular hydrogen, hydrogen gas, which is combined with oxygen. And that was actually for three years making my progression of cataracts slower because I, I had like, oh, you're going to need surgery in six months. And after a year and a half, okay, you're good for a year. Well, so the hydrogen, I think I, I answered your question. I mentioned it to Chris. I don't know if she got back to you. But, um, you know, the hydrogen is uh, very similar to the ozone. It's a type of oxidative treatment. So I think you could continue that. Okay, I wasn't sure. That's why I asked Chris. Because uh, because you didn't, uh, at the time we talk, spoke, you didn't know uh what that was so i cut mm -hmm. it out and in a week i noticed my vision getting worse yeah see a lot of times when you're doing a therapy and you stop it suddenly uh then you know your body will decline because it, it needs it it's used to that so yes, i think it's important it, you, i think i think it's important you continue that uh, the same way is is those of you that have glaucoma i don't want you to get excited with the program and stop your glaucoma drops because you will get an elevation of your pressure. Your body is kind of acclimated to those eye drops and treatments. The general rule I have is if you're doing something consistently, continue it while you're doing my program, unless you're otherwise. 
Yes, the reason why I stopped is because you told me you don't know uh, about that treatment. So I just didn't want to uh, make any mixes, you know, to undermine uh, the treatment. So I said, okay, because I wasn't even aware how much it is helping me. That's something when I watch TV, I, I like a put cannula and inhale for 45 minutes or an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know if uh, reducing uh, inflammation or extra oxygen helps me, but uh, I have like a glasses that are not really a good prescription. And uh, after half an hour, I can read subtitles. In the beginning, I cannot. So it, it works immediately, but I want it like a clean just to commit to this treatment to see, you know, so, so I should continue. Uh, definitely work. continue and keep us posted. Okay, and then I had a hiccup with the um, um, supplements. Uh, I start getting nauseated from them. I divided in three dosage with meals, but uh, and that's why I delayed taking um, um, a homeopathic remedy. I start taking it on Wednesday, but it seems that my nausea got better from homeopathic medication. If you know, if mm -hmm. that's possible, it's getting better, so that's not the problem anymore. But what I had since I start using a uh, um, uh, microcurrent machine is my mouth is start getting very sensitive. Is that possible? What do you mean your mouth is getting sensitive? In, inside of my mouth is like I had a very like a hot pepper, which I cannot tolerate. I don't eat hot spices, but it's, it's all irritated and um, I, I kind of I got a, a two days ago, I got that um, uh, vitamins that spray one. But because of uh, it's very uh, like a sour, I, I cannot tolerate it. So I, I, is it possible that it's from them? Yeah, so maybe I would stop the vitamin spray. No, no, but the vitamin spray I received two days ago. So I, I'm planning to start using it. Mm. Uh, I, I just tried and it's very sour. So is it possible that it's from microcurrent machine that it affects my mouth? Uh, that would be the first time I ever heard of something like that. Okay, so let's hope it's not that. Because yeah, I have, but make sure make sure you're properly hydrated too. Yes, I, I'm. I'm paying attention to that, and my um, I have lots of dental work. I have seven crowns, and I had lots of mercury fillings. So any maybe interaction with that because it it has to be that my t tissues in my mouth are have some residue of mercury. That's yeah. Important. It could be that your body is detoxifying through your mouth. Okay, items. okay. I just want to check, like, I don't mind any, like, hiccups as long as I'm doing proper thing. And I, I received light therapy two days ago, and it actually, it's very pleasant. I, I really like mm -hmm. it, because I'm not, like, used to looking at the, the source of light, so I miss that. Uh -huh. So, basically, um, um, cannot say that uh, there are improvements, but I, I guess two weeks is not the time, you know. No, to, I think <laughs> slow and steady, two weeks, um, uh, I think we're going to, usually I tell people we like to wait, you know, three months. Okay. And, you know, uh, with the homeopathic remedy, I still, maybe it's just coincidence. First time I took it on Wednesday, Thursday morning, I feel, I felt really uh, the best of this description is so obviously hopeless uh, that it was comical. You know, uh, I usually don't have those feelings. Like I'm a little bit stressed because uh, of the mm. or, or my eyes but I'm uh, as uh, when I start doing program I calm down because I made a decision and I'm sticking to this but I, I felt so hopeless that I, I bought something and uh, uh, clicked to see the sh how shipping is going because it's shipped from overseas it look oh my god this is never going to get there and they're going to hold it in the customs that was so obviously ridiculous and I had that feeling whole morning and it went away I would say when I drank coffee, but maybe it's too much. Next morning, I had a feeling, sorry, guys have to listen to this, but I just want to see if I should proceed the same. Next morning, I had a, a feeling of physical heaviness. Like I, 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 had, I had a feeling I had to hold on my lungs because they're so heavy, they're going to drop. You know, that's, that, that feeling was so obviously out of anything that could it be, you know, and the morning after that, I was fine. Is that maybe well? That whenever whenever you're taking a homeopathic remedy, it is kind of uh, shaking up your body. It's doing something to you energetically, so you may have a lot of strange symptoms. But the net effect, and you really can't evaluate a homeopathic remedy after taking one dose. Usually, you take it a couple of days, and you know before we see a trend. But 
if you consistently take the homeopathic remedy and you get these feelings of hopelessness and anxiety, it's not a good remedy for you. Okay, so either, how that, you... either that or you may be taking too high of a dose. I'm taking dose exactly how you said. said well, before. instead just... of taking five drops, you may want to cut back to uh, one drop. Okay, uh, the, the instructions were, uh, was six to seven drops in four well, hours. I know the instructions say that, but some people are sensitive. Mm -hmm. And it's just too much for their body. Okay, so I should go to one drop for ounces of water and for how long? Well, it's too early right now. You've only taken it for a couple of days, correct? Okay, okay, well, since Wednesday. Now, I just want to see, should I proceed? I don't have any... Yeah, no, definitely proceed because you're, you're kind of piecemealing thing. You really haven't started everything at once. So we have That's... to wait until the, everything is in full force. Does that make sense? Okay, I just wanted to check that. And uh, do you have, uh, my last question is, do you have a trick how I can do eye program by myself? Because if I put the drops before I, I um, um, turn on the machine, uh, if I put the drops, if I open my eyes to press start, uh, the drops are going to like leak out. And I always have to ask my husband just to, to do when I'm ready to just press um, start to one start. Is there a trick? No, you, you should be lucky that your husband's here to help you. But you do want to make sure those drops go into your eye. Exactly. If you but if I open my eye, they're going to leak out. Is there a trick that like, I, I even put a piece of tape on a start no, button? No, no, no. You don't need a piece of tape. Remember, you put a drop in your eye. Maybe not all of it's going to be absorbed. Some of it will leak out. But a small amount will be staying on in, in your eye. Okay. But if I open my eye, they kind of leak out. So... I should do it like if I have help, if I don't have help. Yeah, put a drop in and close your eye, but there will be some that leak will leak out of your eye. It's just impossible. But I need to see start the button to start the program. Well, you can start the machine first, then put the eye drops in and just then put the glove on. The one oh. second or so that the machine's running oh, yeah. yes, on I your eye, that would be all right. Okay, that's helpful because I thought I'm missing something. Okay, so that, that was really helpful. Uh, thank you so much. Like, as I said, uh, some hiccups, but, uh, um, and also I um, you told me because I don't have my op optometrist uh, last time didn't want to give me a prescription for eyeglasses because I don't see well enough through my left eye. And I try Costco and Target. And uh, they say if they don't can give me 2060 vision in both eyes, they're not going to write me a prescription. So mm -hmm. uh, that pack, that shipment is from China. I guessed my, like I uh, I looked at my last uh, exam and I just guessed the prescription. I, I felt really bad, but uh, I need something uh, to function. And uh, it seems that I cannot get uh, eyeglasses prescription. So that was really like a very cheap glasses and lenses. And if I if I got the prescription right, I'll I'll get the like a better ones. Do you have any? any better <laughs> like like how do i get because i i my, my optic i have minus 375 i really need glasses to to watch tv well usually what i tell uh, patients to do the treatments for three months before you get a change in your glasses so i wouldn't change your glasses at this point wait three months because there will be some changes in your prescription that occur over that first three months my my prescription that I have right now is really really old. It's like a four years old. And yeah, well, I would wait three months. Do the treatment three months before you get a prescription because you'll be spending money to get a new pair of glasses, and it may be foolish to do it now. I'd wait three months. Okay, so what do I do for three months? <laughs> I, well, I really continue do. using your old prescription. Okay, okay. It's it's really weak, so I, I, I get very close to things and my, my back start hurting. But if that's the uh, best advice that you, you can give me, that's that's fine. Yeah. But you I already right. yes, okay. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay. this, thank this you and good question. luck. Uh we'll, thank you. We'll talk again soon, okay? Yeah, um you. Ferris, how are you doing? Uh pretty good. Thanks. How are you, Dr. Conrad? Uh real good, real good. Okay, I've got several questions about my mom. Uh, as you know, she's got glaucoma and she's doing the microcurrent and the homeopathy. And she's been on it for about five weeks now. Uh, still no change that she notices either in mood or in eyesight. In fact, after doing the microcurrent, she, you know, she, she sees a bit more blurry. She feels 
sort of dazed, you know, stumbling when she walks. So, you know, it's not getting better. I think you said to Chris that she should, she should change the microcard program. Well, the, the one thing is we have to make sure that she's properly hydrated. She is, she is. You know, drinking plenty of water, but if she's having a reaction like that, we should definitely change some of the parameters with the microcurrent machine. She may be sensitive to it. Okay. Do you think the current program might be harmful for her? Uh, unlikely harmful, because uh, the microcurrent is stimulating blood flow, stimulating activity. And those things, you know, she may be detoxing. There could be a lot of factors going on. It's but certainly if her vision is getting worse, uh, number one, um, uh, I would recommend that she sees her local eye doctor to find out what's going on. Is the pressure elevated? Um, you know, she may no, need a change no. in her glasses. There could be a lot of factors going on. No, they haven't said anything. I think we sent you the, uh, if Chris sent you those, those results about two weeks ago, I think. Now, generally, is she a sensitive person? Is she the medication? I, so. I, I would say so, yeah. She's, she is sensitive, yeah. Yeah, so we Not may want to uh, but change change the current or change the frequency on her machine. Okay, so can we do that uh, without, without reprogramming the machine? No, we'd have to re reprogram it, and we can do that online. Where are you located? In Croatia. Yeah, we would have to do that online with the computer because, yeah. you know, if you send it back to the United States, it will take forever for us to get it. I know, yeah, but Chris told me it would, it would be like $1,300 to do that. Including How much? 1300 including the software and a year's worth of... Uh, no, no, that's that's wrong. It's not 1300 You could just buy the software if you're interested. Yeah, that's 600 I think. Yeah, and that's outside of my, it's the company, the Inspirstar company that sells the software. Yeah, yeah, yeah I understand that, yeah. So, so Otherwise, you'd, you'd have to you... ship it to the United States. So how long has she been doing the program? Uh, five weeks now. Yeah, so um, but she, but she you don't have to be really 1300 uh, you've been misinformed, but you would have to buy the software. Okay, okay. That would no, be the only way we can do it. 600. It's six hundred for the software, but I thought we we needed to pay extra for you to to refund no. that. And the software, yeah. there's really no shipping at all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, reprogramming is part of you know your initial fee. You, there'll be no no charge for that. Okay. And the homeopathy also, there's been no change in like five weeks, so. Yeah, well, then we would probably have to schedule a time when I can talk to uh, both of you and find out if we need to change the homeopathic remedy. Right. Typically, I like to give the homeopathic remedy a month. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but if you've been using it for five weeks and there hasn't been any change, then we yeah. definitely have to schedule a consultation. Okay. Uh, do you think it's good for her to do the eye massage daily? Her, her ophthalmologist told her to do the eye massage. So... Uh, I would have to look at her records. I don't know why she's doing the eye massage. He says it's for the drainage. Well, then I would follow his instructions because, uh, you know, my treatments are to be a supplement. It's not a replacement for your traditional eye care. Okay. And your mother has a complex situation because she's had glaucoma surgery and, you know, it's a rather advanced glaucoma. Uh, is the eye program with the glove on the forehead, as you recommended, as effective as, as keeping the glove on no. the eyes? Uh, no, it's more, much more effective over the eyes. The eyes. But remember, the glove doesn't go directly over the eyes. You have to put it yeah, in yeah. a glass glove. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. But if, if she is sensitive to the uh, microcurrent, then what she might want to do is uh, put the glove on the forehead so there'll be less effect on the eyes. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, she does that, but just asking if, if it was as effective as putting it on the eyes. Yeah. No, it'd be less effective, but it may be uh, she may be able to tolerate it a little bit better. So yeah. maybe 
she gets blurriness, you know, she puts it on the eyes, it gets blurry. Well, it could be because of some other factors going on. Maybe she has dry eyes and the pressure of the glove is causing irritation. It may not be the microcurrent. Okay. And, uh, and also make sure she keeps her eyes closed. Yeah, she does. She does. And the light bulb, the light bulb we got here, is is a bit more powerful than the original one you sent us. It, and she sees rays coming from it, not a single point of light. You know. Well, it's the light should be a, a dimly a dimly lit light. We don't want a bright source of light. It should be a very dim light, gentle. It's well, the one you sent us was for the syntonic light therapy was a hundred lumens. And the the weakest one I could find here is 250. So you said she should sit like 10 feet away from the bulb. Yeah. She did, but she now she sees light rays coming out of it. It's not a single point of light like like before. Well, it, it's it's not a single point of light. I mean, the light is scattered. Uh, it should be a diffuse uh, light source. Maybe send me a picture of the light bulb that you're using. Okay. Yeah. Take a picture with your cell phone of exactly what the light bulb looks like when it's turned on so I can see the illumination. Stand 10 feet away, take a picture with your cell phone and send it to me so I can look at it. Yeah, so John, good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it would be good. There's just one one more suggestion. If you could do these sessions like once a week, because I often find, or she often finds, she she has questions. Now uh huh. More confused well, that's a little stuff. bit too much yeah. once a week, uh, but I'll take it under consideration. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, that's it. Thank okay, uh, Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. Hi, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm very excited. I just received my microcurrent machine um, and I'm ready to get started. I've tested it following the instructions in the manual um, and connected the leads with the glove electrodes. Um, but I have a few questions. Um, one, uh, the instructions uh, in the manual state not to place over carotid sinus, but I wasn't quite sure, it, not that any of the programs I have indicate to do that, but I just want to make sure I don't do it, not knowing where that is. Okay, well, uh, the manual is uh, uh, a FDA requirement. And if you read the manual carefully, it'll tell you that you shouldn't place the microcurrent over your eyes. It's just the regulations. So the carotid artery is right on the side of your neck, but I have many, many patients that are doing neck treatments without any problem. So I would just ignore that. So the carotid sinus is the same as the carotid artery? Right, it's, it's located near the carotid artery. So I don't think that's an issue at all. Okay. Um... And it also says not to place the electrodes transcerebrally through the head. And I'm yeah, not but, sure. But many of my patients, we do the brain program, it's transcerebrally. Okay. So this so the manual is I wish we could just I wish we could just throw the manual away, to be honest with you. But oh. it's an FDA requirement that it's not approved for treatments on the brain or the eye. So you're kind of using it off label under my care. Okay, gotcha. Well, you know, I start with reading everything you send so that I get a baseline understanding. Yeah, but that was sent from the company that wasn't sent from me. Okay. That's required that the company sends that in the package. Okay, so then the, the, the table on the last page that talks about the different programs that doesn't apply either because we've reprogrammed the machine specifically to the five that you selected and five that we select. Right. So you have okay. 10, 10 that are customized uh, for you. Okay. Um, 
now the um, the protocols that are set, those protocol in the programs, uh, those protocols are set at a particular currency already, but we have the option of increasing or decreasing for comfort purposes. No, no, you you have no control over the current. That would be actually dangerous. So the plus and minus buttons that are on here. Uh, that's negated. That's not part of your program because studies have shown that a high current, especially when you're treating the eye, can cause problems. That's why we use extremely low current. Okay. See, the, the, this machine has been designed for uh, many, many different types of practitioners. This machine is not just designed for the eye. So there are some physical therapists, chiropractors, et cetera, who, who use, you know, a very, very high current. Okay. So that, so that, uh, that's been overridden based on the. Yeah. Plus, yeah, the plus and minus buttons aren't going to have any effect on your machine. Okay. Um, then, um, and there shouldn't be any push pins or alligator clips that came with the machine. It's just the gloves and the leads. Just the gloves. We'd like the patients to start with that. Yeah. But okay. the uh, push pins and pads are something optional. Okay. Now, the on all the protocols, we use the gloves wrapped in a damp cloth, except for the stress protocol, where you hold the, a glove in each hand. Well, I don't know if you saw the video, but I do have a video uh, giving instructions on glove placement. Have you viewed that? No. Where, where Was that in an email or do I check the website for that? Uh, that should be um, emailed to you. I have to send it to you, but it goes in detail uh, how you, in fact, I think it was two, two or three meetings ago. That's when I gave that. Um, email me uh, info and I'll make sure I send it to you. In fact, what I'll do is I'll send it to the whole group because I think a lot of you are just starting with the microcurrent and that would be beneficial. But it should be sent with your package. We have like four videos we want you to watch. One is a little history of the microcurrent. The second is um, operating the Inspirstar machine, you know, in all kinds of details. And another uh, video is how to improve your results with the microcurrent. Okay, so, all right. So send you an email and yeah. Okay, and then um, and then how because there are, we have ten different uh, programs. How and uh, some of them say you can do multiple times a day. The I program is one. You know what the video goes into all that detail because uh, we have a lot of other questions here. I think you should first watch that video that explains everything because I. Spent okay. about half an hour going through all that. Well, but basically, I, I, the optional programs. It's not like you have to do all ten programs every day. The main program I want you to do is the the one for your eye. The other ones are optional depending on your individual needs. But how far do you have to space the use of these programs apart? Like, if you did the eye program, could you then right away go into doing ring the ears program, or do you? Need yeah, you could. You could. Okay. You could do them back to back. Okay. That's not a problem. Okay. But anyway, right. the the bottom line is you have to listen to your body. I mean, I'm telling you, you can do it back to back, but all of a sudden, if you do it back to back and you feel anxiety or nervous, it may be just be overwhelming. Everyone is different. Of Most course. people can do them back to back. I mean, I've done five programs back to back with no problem, but another individual may have some issues. Okay. And the other thing is when, you, when you're doing programs back to back, make sure you're properly hydrated. Okay. You know, drinking plenty of water. Is there a way to test that ahead of time? Uh. Is there an indicator on the skin or? Not face? really. Some yeah. people say that your skin. Elasticity. Elasticity. Yeah. If you pull your skin up and it stays there. That means you're really dehydrated. If it okay. pops right down, um, 
you know, then you're properly hydrated. That's one way of doing it. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Okay, well, listen, good luck to you. Keep us posted. Yeah, thanks. Okay. All right, Walter. Hello, Walter. You have to unmute can yourself. Can you, can you hear me? Yep, I hear you fine. Okay. Um, I had a question. Uh, are you familiar with this uh, Beamer machine? Is that the same? You're, you're familiar with that? Um, one of oh, yeah. Said I'm familiar with the Beamer, but the Beamer is not microcurrent. Okay. So it, it's, um, you know, I have, um, you know, um, one of my, my, my fiance, you know, she, the friend said that it would, the Beamer really help her uh, on some pain issues, uh, fracture issues and everything and pain issues and all. So your machine is different from the Beamer. Yeah, the, the Beamer, here's the analogy. Whenever you, whenever current flows through a wire, uh, there's an electromagnetic wave that comes out. That's the Beamer. It's, it's the electromagnetic wave. This okay. is, the microcurrent is a direct current. Okay. The okay. Beamer is like a pulse wave. Okay. Uh, I have used the Beamer on the eye. I don't recommend it. Okay. Really because... Where it's not really accurate in terms of um, the intensity setting. Okay. Okay. And early well, on, I, I thought that more was better. I used some high settings, and and people okay. had an increase in their eye pressure and and a loss, not a permanent loss of vision, but the vision decreased. Okay. It's just with, with with the microcurrent machine that you're using, we can very accurately uh, measure and produce a certain uh, current. Okay. And for the eye, it's an extremely low current. We're using between 20 and 40 uh, microamps. Okay. And, you know, uh, I've probably been on the microcurrent now about two weeks. When should I start seeing some results? You know, I'm doing the uh, homeopathic. I'm doing the light therapy. I'm trying to do it every day. Um, so when, I mean, how long do you have to do it before you really start seeing results? So generally speaking, we like to see a change in your mental, emotional state first. Some people respond very quickly. Some people will see an improvement after a couple of days, even after the first treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, it all depends on your condition, how long that you've had it. Mm -hmm. If you've had macular degeneration for five years, you know, it may be a slow improvement. And also it depends how advanced your condition is. Okay. Uh, the other thing is it depends on, um, you know, your diet, your hydration, there's a, a lot of factors. But generally speaking, we like to see a positive shift, um, you know, within the first couple of months. Okay. Well, you know, I haven't gone. I think my next ophthalmologist appointment, retina specialist, probably another four months away. So uh, I'm going to continue the treatments. Uh, and I think I had uh, talked to Chris about this, but I was doing this biofeedback. I think I had Chris has sent you the information and I'm not totally certain what, uh, but apparently you can do it remotely and it's, it's supposed to have, you know, do, are you familiar with that protocol? I'm not really big on the biofeedback remotely. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so that's not something you would recommend then? No. Okay. All right. Well, that's what I needed. To well, know. at least I wouldn't recommend it while you're beginning the program. I mean, if it's something that you've been doing, uh, you know, every week now, I, I would continue it. The general okay, well, rule is I don't want people to stop what they're doing routinely when they're beginning the program um, uh, because it may cause a decrease in their vision if their body's used to it. Okay, well, I've, I've got about another six sessions and then, you know, that I've paid for. And so I might just go ahead and continue to do that. But there shouldn't be a problem with me doing the microcurrent in the evenings with doing the biofeedback in the morning. I'm only doing no. it twice. Okay. All right. Okay. That sounds great. And then um, on the, um, on the prostate, you know, using uh, one of the uh, optional, uh, you know, pro protocols I have is the prostate. So the placement of the, of, of the, you know, the pads and everything, I'd still wrap it in the, the, the washcloths and I'd put the one pad uh, near where the prostate is and the other on my back. I would put one, uh, your lower abdomen, Okay. And then one uh, by the um, top of um, your anal crease in the back. Okay. So okay. it's the low back. All right. 
Okay. All right. And then uh, hydrogen peroxide in a nebulizer. Uh, do you think that also, I mean, that's, would that help at all on the macular degeneration with using, uh, you know, hydrogen peroxide 3%, you know, and, and with a mask, would that, would there I don't have, I don't have much experience with that. What I do like is ozone. Okay. Well, I know you recommended the ozone uh, machine doing it rectally. You, you think that would help with the macular uh, Definitely. All the studies have shown, and that's something that I really encourage uh, all of my patients to embrace is the ozone therapy, either auricular uh, or rectal. And or I do have a couple rectal. of videos um, on the rectal insufflation. I think Dr. Frank Schallenberger gave a really super talk on the benefits of ozone. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I, I've, I've, I've seen him before. I've, I actually went to him in 2015. So I'm, and I got, I I'm not that familiar with the hydrogen peroxide nebulizer, but you know, there are all types of oxidative treatments, but a lot of the studies and research has been done with ozone to show that, you know, it is beneficial. Okay. So how often would you do the rectal treatments with the ozone? Uh, I would say maybe uh, three times a week, every other day. Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe Monday, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. And on the on the stress detox, I, I think you said that you could uh, use that uh, with another person where you hold hands and then you take the 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 moisture glove in one hand and the other person has the other one and then you can do that jointly, right? Yeah. So let's say your left hand holds the glove, your right hand can hold your partner's hand. And then her uh, right hand uh, would hold the other glove. So you form a circuit. Okay. And you still need to have it wrapped in the moistened washcloth and everything. Oh, uh, no. That. You can just hold the uh, glove. The okay. only reason I like the washcloth is it kind of protects the glove. Okay. Uh, it's easy to, you know, clean the washcloth. Okay. Have you, have you listened or watched the video on... Uh, the gloves and the washcloths and placements. I think so. Yes. I mean, that's, that's one of the uh, four videos that you sent. Right. Uh, yes, that video is important because it talks about using essential oils, uh, uh, how to care for the washcloth. You want to make sure that you don't use toxic detergent. Right. And I think you reckon Dr. Bone, B-O-N-N-E-R-S, uh, uh, soap or oil, as I recall. Right. You want to use them. I mean, you could use other detergents, but you'd have to make sure you clean it thoroughly because I've had some patients who, you know, use strong detergent on the washcloth and then they got develop eczema and a rash on their eyes. Okay. Okay. And then um, what I know you said you use the uh, frankincense, put two drops of frankincense in the water, you know, and I I'm doing that. Do, would putting frankincense in around the eye help also? Uh, that may be too strong. You could dilute the frankincense uh, with olive oil or something like that. Uh, but putting the, the straight oil on the eye could be very toxic. Okay. So you wouldn't recommend that you would go ahead and just put the two drops in the water the way you recommend? Yeah, a few oh. drops in the water and then soak the washcloth that way. Okay. All right. Okay. I think, uh, I think that's, uh, and let me, one other, I guess one other uh, question with the ozone, uh, does it, does it help also help with heart conditions and everything? Help with what? Heart conditions. Oh, definitely. It's improving the oxygenation. Now, it's not going to chelate and, you know, improve uh, the, the blood flow. Uh, you okay. know, chelation okay. therapy will open up the arteries, but the ozone will, you know, improve the oxygenation and, and the function. Okay. Well, the, with, the, with your machine, would it help with the circulation if someone has had blood, blood clotting issues? Would it help? Uh, it depends on the cause of the blood clotting issues. Okay. It was, it was you know, from surgery. She had um, heart valve replacement, uh, heart valve repair, uh, and then had to get on a blood thinner. So is there something? Well, we, was, do have, uh, we do have circulation programs. Okay. So on, on the machine, that this machine that you sent to me, we'd have to just get it reprogrammed to have, have a circulation program. Right. In fact, I'm, I'm getting some leg cramps at night. And I've been using the circulation program for that. And it's, it's been okay. helpful. 
Okay, so what I if I would want, I guess I could do. I know one of the things I'm considering is I think uh, uh, is getting on your yearly protocol is that we could send it back in and have it reprogrammed. This is for my fiance to have it, you know, help her out in in, in the area of the uh, circulation. Mm -hmm. Now, there's two ways of reprogramming it. One is to send it back to the office. Okay, and we can do it that way. Uh, the other is to um, you know invest in the software that the company has. And okay. then I can, log, I can log on to your computer and make the changes instantly. Okay. Okay. Consider that then. Well, thanks, uh, Dr. Kreiner. R really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. And keep okay. us uh, keep us up to date. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Sheila, are you there? Sheila. Hello. How are you doing, Sheila? I'm doing fine. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you, but I can't oh. see you. All these. Oh dear! I thought I fixed all of that. Here I'm. Oh, here. you know what? Maybe uh, you don't have a video. I think with this format, we may not have video. Oh, okay. okay. So I can't see you, but you can see me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Okay. Um, well, I did put a question about oh, this. Wow. This CR. I'm oh, doing well. I'm on this conference. Uh, it's a cheaper. I'm sorry. So. Who else is talking? <laughs> I can hear. Sheila, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Let me try to. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. So I, I did send um, a question in the chat, but then I thought maybe I could follow up easier um, about this CRVO. CRVO. Uh -huh. Okay, so I was have I've had four of those shots. Um, last time at six weeks, I started I had um, a regression in well the third time at six weeks I had a regression. Um, it's been six weeks now, and I am I am really not able to read through words at this moment um, too well. Uh, a lot of um, blurriness and the letters um so but i heard you say that if you stop something real quickly you can have some regression but i had a lot of um side effects last time from it so i just don't see myself going back to have that what can i do if i can do anything or just live through well, this? What, are you, what are you doing now uh well i just got my microcurrent um, and just learned how to use it yesterday. And I am taking your homeopathic. I think I got it earlier this week. Um, I did get the, um, so I, I started the homeopathic there. That's basically what I'm doing. Um, that yeah, I, I have think you have to wait till you begin using the microcurrent, the light therapy, uh, you know, and, and you're doing the entire program for a couple of weeks and then give us some feedback on that. Okay, so I mean, the regression, the reason I, I'm asking you about that is the doctor's office was very strongly opposed to me not coming in and telling me I'm going to ruin my eye vision and you know, these kind of things, the scare tactics. And I, I just, I told them I had too many side effects and, uh, and I just let it go. Um, so I'm assuming that that from what I'm hearing today, the um, the problem with the um, with stopping on it quickly could just be it'll regress some, and then with the therapies, I'm going to see what the kind of improvements that I'm going to be getting. Am I? Am well, I here's the you know people that are using or getting the injections. Um, first of all, I'm against the injections, but sometimes they're needed. You know, most of the studies with the injection, at least people that have had long-term injections, I'm talking about five years of injections, all of them had a loss of vision. The injections sometimes help early on, maybe the first couple of months, the first six months. Yeah. And um, generally what I advise my patients, if, if you're doing the program and your vision is stable or getting better, you don't need the injections. But if you're doing the full program, microcurrent, light therapy, homeopathy, uh, the nutrition, 
and you're still losing vision, then you need the injections. And I have found that maybe uh, 10 to 15% of patients who are doing the program still need the injections. Okay. Um, I hope, hopefully not, because they would probably have to change me to something other than the one that they gave me because I, mm -hmm. the, the side effects I had were pretty extreme. Um, yeah, but if, you, if the side effects are extreme, then you just, you're really not benefiting from the injections. No, it, it did improve my vision, but no, it, this last one was horrendous. So I'm not, you know, there's, if the side effects are going to come along with it, no, I can't do it. And, but they're doing, this particular outfit is doing a lot of um, studies, you know, for the, for the pharmaceuticals and they have all kinds of studies you can get into. I'm not interested in studies that have no results. So, well, can, a lot you know. of these, uh, a lot of these injections are uh, horrible. Let me just see if I, I came across an article. There's a new injection for dry macular degeneration. And um, actually here, I'm gonna show you the, the lead article here. Um, let me put the... Uh, screen sharing on here again. Epoch Times, five patients left blind after taking newly approved drug treating vision loss. Yeah. This is a new injection. I think the pharmaceutical companies are horrible. You know, these studies, uh, you really can't believe any of these studies. They manipulate the data. And this was uh, big news. They finally had an injection for dry. But yeah. five patients of total blindness after taking this new drug. Yeah, there, I, I mean, I just went in for one of the side effects, which wasn't really bad, but I could go to a dermatologist and the dermatologist said, because the doctor had told me there were no um, no side effects to the ylea, uh, and that my eye was a closed system, which didn't make any sense to me, and that the drug would not affect anything else in my body. So I went to a dermatologist who told me the doctor told you what you needed to hear. Right. And I did not like that response. Um, I mean, it was ridiculous. I just don't trust very much anymore. Um, but, you know, I, I've trusted um, the kind of therapies I, I had a, what I understand was a machine that had rife frequencies on it. So I understand frequencies and this seems so much better. I'm so ex excited and anxious to get started on it. I did have a question when you mentioned, somebody mentioned drops. Should I have drops in my eyes before I start it so that they are wet? No, no, that's not necessary. The patient that asked you that question is using the microcurrent for um, cataracts. Okay. And in order to get an increased effect with the Oclumed, which is a drop to help reverse cataracts, you put that drop in the eye and then do the microcurrent. I did buy the Oclumed, um, and I, I don't know if I should be using it um, with all these other things that I, you know, I have CRVO and um, macular degeneration. Well, I think that your main issue, if I, if I remember your records correctly, is the central retinal vein occlusion. The cataracts are just something minor. Yeah. Okay, good. So I won't do that then. We have to address the main problem, which is okay. the, the central retinal vein occlusion. And is the microcurrent the the catalyst for that? In in yes. most instances, okay. Well, the, the microcurrent and the uh, homeopathic remedy. Okay, the light therapy. What do the glasses look like? I didn't find glasses in there. With the mm -hmm. light, they're glasses that have a color tint. I yeah, think probably pretty. your glasses would be mu epsilon. Maybe okay. they'll be coming in the mail. Mu epsilon. Oh, separately. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. You may want to check with Chris. It does, it does say wear your mu epsilon glasses for 10 minutes each day. I will. I'll check with her. It might have just they're it, probably coming. Sent separate cover or something. Mm -hmm. Um you talked about chelation on your last um or you talked about doing the heavy metal test on your last um, talk with prospective um, clients, I think. And um, I, I, it's very sad to say, but yes, I probably have that bucket that is really full and everything causes trouble. So I was wondering, I know that I've been exposed to mercury and lead and actually chemical dioxin when I lived in Missouri. So I know I have things like that. And I'm wondering if I could just start chelation and where I would go with that. I, I, I meant to read that before I talked to you, but I am hoping, and not read that, listen to that video. But can I start the chelation? Just oh yeah, start you can start the chelation without um, uh, doing uh, the heavy metal test. Remember, Chelation is not just for removing heavy metals. It improves the uh, cardiovascular system. Okay. So you did have, a, a, you know, like a minor stroke. The central retinal vein occlusion is like a stroke. So we want to improve the um, circulation. Okay. Okay. And chelation would be would be ideal. Is that something that I get through you, the pills and things like that? I or yeah, that... I would talk to Chris. Uh, we do okay. recommend. The, uh, and I do have a video on uh, chelation and detox. Okay, yeah, and I, I think that's in the videos that she's- but I like the uh, rectal suppositories and the uh, um, oral, they seem to be. Now, are you detoxing in that? I mean, am I, I, I understand that my skin is my biggest organ and it'll probably throw off toxins. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're doing chelation, are you detoxing and will you have, I know we have to be hydrated, but are there any other things to, to not worry about if they happen? I mean, I just want to be, you know, aware sometimes it's better. I know it's, they, the, the doctors that the eye doctor didn't tell me anything about the ILEA because they don't want you to have the symptoms because you've heard about them i feel like it's being aware then when they happen you don't get afraid you know i well the, the uh, oral and rectal chelation the chelation is taking place through your urine oh okay and maybe okay. your bowel movement it's not you're not detoxifying through your skin okay uh, when you do infrared sauna and you know you're hydrating and you're sweating that's a type of de detoxification, but the heavy metals are not removed in your sweat. Okay. And chelation doesn't chelate out bacteria? No, chelation doesn't touch bacteria. And it's mainly for the heavy metals. Okay. 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 All righty then. I, yeah, I think, I think I've gotten everything answered. So that, so the, Retina, the vein occlusion is not the macular de degeneration that I have in the background. No. Okay. Retinal vein occlusion is completely different than the macular degeneration. Okay. Just trying to understand it. Thank you, doctor. I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. A couple of quick questions here before we end. Um, Marianne, glove placement for hypertension. Hold one glove in the left, one in the right. Are pads as effective as the glove and washcloth combination? Pads are just as effective, uh, but I do not recommend pads for the eye treatment. But you can use pads for just about all the other protocols. Mary, I was told to be five feet away from the light. You were told correctly. Mirjana, uh, who's in Croatia, or is it Ferris in Croatia, uh, they need to be 10 feet away because they can't get a lower watt light bulb. But all of you in the US that have a low watt light bulb, 10 watt, 15 watt, you should be five feet away. 
How are you changing light therapy without the incandescent light bulbs now? Well, the light therapy should be done with the incandescent light bulbs. Um, but if you're getting an LED, then there's nothing you can do about it. But I prefer the incandescent light bulbs. All right. I think that that's it. Oh, here's one here. Been using the Inspirstar for two days. Frequently indicates connection poor. One of the biggest reasons for that is poor hydration. If your body is dehydrated, you will get that indicator light coming on, which indicates a poor connection, or your glove or washcloth is not properly hydrated. But those um, indicator lights should not come on. If they come on, the circuit is being uh, broken. Okay, well, a lot of really good questions. I want to thank all of you. And um, uh, Ferris, um, I'll consider doing um, uh, the meetings more frequently. I'll have to get approval from my wife if, if she'll let me do that every uh, every week. But that would be a good idea. We do it every week. Thanks very much. Thank all you. All right. But listen, blessings to all of you. And I look forward to... Um, uh, talking to you again in two weeks. Uh, but also, uh, I think I mentioned, if you do want to get in touch with Chris, go to freeconsult.us. Sometimes it's better than, you know, playing uh, playing phone tag. Freeconsult.us, you can sign up for a specific time. I think that can be very effective. And um, I will be sending uh, all of you, uh, this is being recorded, so I'll be sending you a, a copy of this meeting. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a good weekend. Okay, bye.